zum dritten Mal Buongiorno Raumstation. Well, and now we hope that we will enter as this. Buongiorno, Signor Nispoli. Buongiorno, guten Tag. Well, it will take some, it takes some time for the signal to arrive from the ISS because it goes via Houston to a satellite and then down to Mines in Germany. But we can hear you well. Is this your third time on the ISS? Is it just as fascinating for you as the first time? Oh, yes. Uh, my first uh, flight was on the space shuttle, short duration flight to build this uh, space station. Second one was a long duration, six months or five and a half months. And now I have another five months, four and a half, five months up here in station. It's incredible. This uh, house laboratory is absolutely incredible because because the situation around here is incredible, but also because of, or actually, <laughs> because of the work we are doing here. And as you can see, the lab here is full of equipment, as anything that you can imagine. It, it's just great to be here, work, and uh, spend my time here. Now you are in the Columbus module. Looks like you are getting Earth closer to you. Now in this module, there are many experiments that you are doing. Can you explain to us what exactly you're doing up there? Yes, this is one of the three big laboratories that we have on the uh, space station. There is a U.S. laboratory, Japanese laboratory, and a European laboratory. This is configured so, so that in every orientation of the module, there is a rack, and inside this rack, there are other uh, storage location like this one on the ceiling but uh, there are many places where we have uh, facilities where we can conduct uh, science and each one of these uh, modules is dedicated to a special branch of science uh, here we have a bio lab dedicated to biology then we have the European physiology module then we have the human research facility and so on so on so on we can do metallurgy we can do uh, all sort of science uh, uh, here. It's, it's really uh, incredible. Now, if you could just pick one from the VITA mission, which is about the life sciences, what do you find most fascinating? What interests you the most? That's a very different, uh, difficult question because there are so many things that are happening here. I am basically, I am a, an engineer, so I understand better things that have to do with technology. Uh, this is, for example, is an experiment that we are preparing. It's uh, a kind of a armor. It's a shield. You're trying to test uh, how portable shield can work in space to block uh, harmful radiation. This will do in the next uh, few days. But down here, and I think you can see, it, there is a, a, a box uh, that contained uh, 16 samples. They just arrived a couple of days ago from Earth. And these are all cell cultures. There are so many things inside. There are some cells that uh, uh, need to be reprogrammed. So uh, I find it fascinating when I, when I read all the description. And of course, I don't understand all of them. At the end, I'm just here to execute experiments. I'm not the experimenters. The experimenters are on the ground, are the scientists, are the research centers on the ground. And they really come up with crazy stuff, which, uh, which is, again, uh, really fascinating. Now, um, not you are fascinated, or as that nano, but Hollywood is also intrigued by the ISS. There's a Hollywood movie where the ISS is hit by space debris and destroyed. Do you sometimes think of things like that? Well, uh, yes, of course, this is a possibility. In fact, we have three major um, really. event, that catastrophic events that can... Drei mögliche. 
at, uh, uh, okay, I'll get, I'm getting some interference here. Can I, can I continue or should I stop? Volker, what should I do? <laughs> yes, continue, continue, continue. So, so I was saying that on station there can happen three, three major emergencies, which is uh, uh, we get hit by something, we start losing air, we can have a fire, or we can have a contamination for something that is very toxic. And uh, these are the three main events, and every day uh, we have a procedure in place, we have sensors, we have all sorts of equipment here that allow us to act in case of emergency. In fact, here I'm just see, uh, grabbing one of our masks. See? As you can see, we have uh, equipment everywhere that uh, is supposed to help us in, uh, in overcoming this uh, uh, emergency situation. I'm not worried. I mean, I feel prepared. I feel we have the right equipment. I feel we have the right training. training. Of course, if we get hit uh, the way uh, it happens always in Hollywood, uh, we, will have, we will not have that much chance. But if you think that the space station has been uh, in space for 15 years and never had any problem, any hit, I think uh, that situ extreme situation that we saw in the movie is kind of uh, far-fetched. Now, on Monday, there will be a solar eclipse in the U.S. How will you see it? Oh, this is going to be a very interesting uh, thing. I never saw a solar eclipse uh, from space, and I'm looking forward to look at it. I saw some pictures that some of the other astronauts took. Uh, we are going to have uh, the capability of seeing it during three passes because we are rotating very fast around the Earth, and uh, so we'll catch it uh, three times in the United States. Unfortunately, it will be a little bit far away from us, but we all are planning to uh, capture it, record it, uh, look at it with our eyes, but also use uh, the equipment that we have to transmit Im images on the ground. And we have a, a pretty elaborate plan to uh, take all the available windows and make sure that we can capture this uh, exceptional event. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Nespoli, for the interview to the ISS, and we wish you a great and healthy time up there. Thank you. You're welcome, you're welcome. And uh, here, I'll give you a little flip, just as a salute, just to show you what you can do in microgravity. Of course, this is a simple thing, but this helps us uh, in, uh, in understanding, helps you understanding that this is a place really outside the world where the rules of gravity do, do not apply, and, and you can do so many things. And I'm so grateful for the, to the European Space Agency, to the Italian Space Agency, to all the space agencies on the world that have built this incredible laboratory. I think it's one of the assets that we have. And see you on Earth back in a few months. Ciao. Station. This is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you all participants with the European Space Agency. We are now resuming operational audio communications.